On April 26, 1890, a story published by the Tombstone Epitaph in Arizona documented the event of two cowboys shooting a large flying creature out of the sky. It was described as resembling an alligator with an elongated tail and the immense pair of wings. Vital evidence for this incident was a photo taken showing off the creature's corpse nailed to a wall with cowboys below stretching their arms to show how huge the capture was. This event would go on to be recounted as the years went by, with so many people remembering this story and the photo that accompanied it, believing that the creature seen in the photo was a pterodactyl or thunderbird, a creature from Native American mythology that's also been described as a cryptid. What could have been proof of a pterodactyl's existence in a time with humans or possibly a new discovery of an unknown creature seems to have completely disappeared as no one has any copy or source for the image. Why is that? How could so many different people across the world remember something that most likely never existed at all? The first mention of a photograph comes from writer Jack Pearl, who wrote about the story in an issue of Sega Magazine in May of 1963. This is said to be the first recount of the story in media since its publication. Pearl describes the photo as, A huge bird nailed to a wall. The newspaper said it had been shot by two prospectors and hauled into town by wagon. Lined up in front of the bird were six grown men with their arms outstretched, fingertip to fingertip. The creature measured about 36 feet from wingtip to wingtip. Four months later in the same year, in an issue of Fate magazine, writer H.M. Kramer claimed the whole story was true, even saying that the photograph was published and appeared everywhere in newspapers throughout America. With this information being revealed, more and more people started to chime in and would be so sure that they remembered seeing a photograph just like what was described. Aside from the photograph, the epitaph's report is confirmed to be true, as it was printed. Here we can see the original article, which features no photograph. When asked about this, the epitaph stated that the photo never existed, or if it did, then they had no clue about it. Another thing to point out is that at the time of the story, the tombstone epitaph did not have the ability to publish photos in their articles. So with no photo existing in the original newspaper, and no photo being confirmed by the publication itself, where did this even come from? There are many theories and explanations as to what could be the cause of all this, along with many recreations and hoaxes. But before I get into all that, I think it's important to point out a few more incidents that occurred before and after this event. On June 12th, 1890, the San Diego Weekly Union reported the story of a young boy named Jimmy Diller who claimed to have seen a similar creature to that of the Tombstone Thunderbird, described with bat light wings, a long bill, and a tail twisted like a donut. Something to mention is that this story was published on June 12th, two months after the Tombstone incident, so it's unsure if this sighting takes place before the Tombstone event or afterward, as it took a while for news articles and stories to get around during the time, meaning that the time frames of stories would be a bit confusing. The San Diego Weekly published the original Tombstone story a few days before, with an illustration attached that gives us our first and oldest recreation of the creature. Upon showing this image to Jimmy, he was so sure that this was the same creature he spotted. This story comes from an individual who remembered this account while reading Old West magazine in 1970. Upon remembering this, he wrote to the magazine and recollected a story told by two cowboys who had seen a very similar creature to what was described in the epitaph around 1890. The cowboys shot at and chased the creature until the horses became too spooked to continue any further. The flying creature was never killed and flew away. It's possible that this was the original incident and the whole story of it being shot down was fabricated by the epitaph. In the original publication, it mentions that there were plans to bring it into town, which means that a photo of any kind couldn't have happened if it was never brought into town in the first place to be published alongside the story in various newspapers. It is possible they could have brought the corpse in after, took a photo, then had it published later on other papers. But I think if a discovery like this were to have been made, there'd be more documentation as to what it was and more photos. A couple more things to note is that the men cut off a small portion of its wing to take home, while later, one of them arrived in town for supplies in order to skin the creature as a means to send its hide to scientists. If this is true, then what happened to the rest of the body? What did any of the scientists make of the creature if they were set its skin? I'm probably overanalyzing this, but I've never seen anyone discuss these points of the story from the research I've done. I'm inclined to believe that if there was a photo 
it probably wasn't of the actual incident, but just a mere recreation that was made soon after, with it possibly being published alongside recountings of the story, to give a visual example of sorts. Countless recreations and interpretations of this photo exist everywhere. I'll only be looking over a few, but thunderbirdphoto.com provides an in-depth explanation of all the mock-ups and hoaxes that have been created and is a huge source for this video, so please check out the site and their channel after this. It's believed the first hoax photo of this incident dates back to 1995, when a man by the name of Alan G submitted it to Strange Magazine. The image was examined by Dr. Carl Schucker, who discovered it was a hoax, as the pterosaur model used in the photo is from an encyclopedia titled The Unexplained. This is the most popular mock-up that's used throughout many discussions of the photo. It's a creation by Christopher Smith, who uploaded the image to his Flickr page in 2010. These two are from a TV show titled Freaky Links. This is an edited photo of the capture of outlaw John Satang, originally published in Strange Magazine, issue 19, and this is believed to have been some sort of gag postcard from the American Southwest in the early 20th century. This is just a theory, as there really isn't a concrete origin for this photo. This is a life-size reconstruction of Argentavis Magnificence, on display at the Los Angeles County Museum. While it isn't usually confused with the Thunderbird photo, it's commonly associated with the cryptid as a whole. It's so interesting to look at the numerous photos that have been created since word of the photo's existence got out. No matter how many mock-ups or hoaxes come around, there still hasn't been an image that looked exactly like what people remembered. It's always not quite right. Throughout my research online, I've discovered a common trend from those who say they have seen the photo, come across it while looking through an old book, whether it be about cryptozoology or unexplained mysteries as a whole. An eerie case related to this comes from a user on Reddit who tells the story of how their friend owned a book that featured the image, or at least the one that was really similar, only to look through the book again years later to find that it seemingly disappeared. The Pierre Burton Show is a Canadian TV program that's said to have featured the photograph, being shown by cryptozoologist Ivan T. Sanderson. However, nothing can be found as the National Archives of Canada didn't properly catalog the footage so it's all known of it's lost or simply misplaced in the archive. Although, a conflicting report about all this comes from a couple of sources. I could find that say a photograph was never shown during Sanderson's time on the show. He had only described it. Ivan T. Sanderson is believed to have owned a copy of the photo, but lost it due to unclear circumstances. Everything I talked about has been so bizarre and a bit confusing. So many sources and recollections with possible leads, but yet here we are decades later without any proof other than the words of others. Let's start off with the idea that the photo did exist and showcased an abnormally large bird or pterosaur. If the reports are to be believed, then it means that possibly pterosaurs lived a bit longer past their known extinction date, or maybe this was a whole other creature. The only other large flying bird to coexist with humans was the Pterotornis, but they went extinct about 10,000 years ago. So they couldn't have been around the time the incident was reported, unless if by some miracle they had survived. However, that still doesn't explain the odd description of whatever it was they saw. I really don't have a good explanation as to what it could have been. In terms of the photo being missing, we can chalk this up to it not being properly archived and legitimately becoming lost. Now let's get into the reasons why this photo could be fake. Remember when I mentioned the idea of this being a gag postcard? Well, there's a high probability that this was nothing more than that. You can find a few postcards that featured various giant birds. This photo in particular shows off a giant eagle that I could see people misremembering years later as something else. Photos of dead birds pinned to barns or being held by hunters were common imagery of the past, as birds of prey were depicted as thieves and mischievous creatures. As you take a look at these photos, it can be understood how someone would conjure up a false memory of seeing the Thunderbird photo if they had come across these photos years before knowing about the mystery. This photo of a dead manta ray is another possible explanation for the reason why so many people claim to remember seeing the photo. It's really close to a lot of descriptions of the missing photo. Obviously this isn't a bird, but if anyone had seen this as a child while flipping through an old book, I'd say that years later, as you tried to remember what it was that you saw or see other people talking about something similar, you'd be convinced it was the Thunderbird. The story of the missing Thunderbird photo is fascinating. Continuing over half a century later, more and more reports are being made from different people throughout the world who swear up and down that the photo exists, or at least did exist. The fact that there was never a mention of a photograph existing until Jack Pearl's report in 1963 
makes me think it most likely was just a hoax. One thing that is for certain about this is that the legend of the Tombstone Thunderbird will continue to be talked about and debated for years to come.